All right, let's take a look at some of the new features in Grid OpenJS Grid 1.1. OpenJS Grid 1.0 brought our standard grid, which we see here, uh, with column sorting and searching and filtering and next and back, etc., and resizing. That was all in 1.0. So 1.1 is what we're taking a look at mostly these two examples. We've got a bare bones, which is now that you now what you're able to do is turn off all that um, sorting. The pager's gone. Um, we've got all the resizing gone. You can't resize these columns anymore. Up here, you can resize the columns. Here, all that's turned off. Okay? There's no click listeners. There's no nothing. This grid is just boom. This is it. That's all you get. Okay? Then we've got an all the stops grid. And this is what I'll be explaining a lot of the new features in, is this one. We've got automatic um, automatic row counting. So no matter what your rows are in terms of IDs, this is just an auto row count. So it'll just give you the rows. Um, it has editable cells. So if I want to say this is a test and hit save, it will save that. If I refresh the page, you can see that actually saved. It's got auto linking, where I can actually give this a link, and right now um, it, it takes tokens, so you can say, well, I want my link to have my value. I want it to have the column name in it. I want it to have the row ID in it. All those are options when you're doing linking. So what this does is it will do a Google search, um, giving it the, the query that's in here. So if I click that, it takes me to Google, and there's my adaptive payments right there. Um, which is pretty cool. So auto linking. Um, we've got features that we didn't have before, some bug fixes really, that I can't go back further than I have and I can't go more forward than I have. I'm not going to go through 1500 rows, but yeah, so we've got that. So let's talk about how you do some of these things. Oh, one other feature that I really want to talk about. If I go open Web Inspector and I refresh the page, We've got custom callbacks. A custom callback function was called, and we've got uh, a row click function too. So if I click a row, it tells me, oh, I just clicked a row, and it has this ID. So it's pretty cool. Um, so let's look, talk about how to do some of these. Here is the all the stops grid. Okay, this is the most complicated you'll ever get for now. <laughs> so again, I, I know when we first talked about this, we said it's going to be super easy. Well, it is. This is the regular grid call. This is, if you don't want any bells and whistles, this is the normal grid call. And they all, all of them use the table setup, the very easy, simple table setup. They all use that, okay? So what this is, so this is the normal call, but let's go to the all the, you know what, let, before we go through all the stops, let's take a look at the bare bones. Here's the bare bones. All it does is turn all things off. It turns resizable off, resizable columns off, it turns click to sort off, it turns sticky rows off, and it turns the page off. Again, what sticky rows were is um, if I'm here and I want to stick a row at the top, I double click it and it sticks it at the top. So what, what that looks like is if I go to say 50 here, and if I'm scrolling, you can see that this row is stuck here at the top and you can stick um, multiple rows like that so they're up there so they're up there for comparison purposes that way I can actually compare rows if as I need to so that's what sticky rows is and so all that's off for bare bones okay now let's take a look at the all or nothing grid so we've got inline editing on that's the big feature of this new one inline editing is done so super simple okay and it's fully customizable too so basically you turn inline editing on. This is the main flag, turn it on, turn it off. Okay. Then you've got your column options uh, option. You have to set this and you have to tell me what columns you want to be editable. That's the main thing. Now I could have gone with the philosophy from before where I'm setting the width down here. I could have had you set it here but I don't really want to flood all these options, all these advanced options in these attributes. That's why I'm making this array. And it's not that hard to use. Once you type it once, um, you don't have to type it again. So you've got a column options array right here. Well, columns options object, I should say. So our columns are discount. So we have a bunch of columns. Discount code is here, and items is here, etc. So you're just using those. So I'm only going to define things for three of them. I don't need to define all of them. Discount code, I'm setting editable to inline. Why am I not setting it to true? Well, because there's going to be other kinds of editing in the future, maybe like a pop-up editor. For now, there's inline editing, okay? So I've turned that on for these two. Um, I'll talk about this in a second. So that's all you have to do to turn on inline editing. There's one last step that you have to do, and that's edit your Ajax file. Before, 
Um, and I already did a lot of, I already did a whole video on editing, so I'm not going to get too deep into it. But before, um, you just had this part. Now all you're doing is calling grid save. And, and that's it. That's all you have to do. It gets more complex later if you want to, but for now, um, that's how you save, and it works great. So that's inline editing. So the linking is pretty cool. Basically, what you do is you, again, you just set this here, and you could add a link, you know, to these guys. I wouldn't recommend adding a link to an editable cell, but... Uh, you could. These are just options now. So I'm, I'm setting the link. Basically, I set it to a URL, and I have these tokens I can use. I have these tokens. I've got value, I've got call, and I've got row ID. Okay, those are the different tokens I can use, and they'll be replaced when it's in in code with their appropriate guy. So value will be replaced by the value of the cell. Column will be the value of the column, which is this guy actually right here. And row ID is going to be the the different row ID for that. So that's how that works. Okay. Um, show row number. So show row number just shows the row count on the side here. Turn that on and it will automatically add the row numbers to the to the table there. Uh, I've turned sticky rows off for here. Uh, now these event listeners, uh, well not really events, they're just methods on the on the call here. I've got load complete which gets called after Ajax is finished and all that does is say here custom load function done what you have here is you can take in the grid like this and what this will let you do is uh, it, it'll give you a reference to the grid that was just finished loading okay then we've got the row click function which doesn't ta doesn't take a parameter but what it does have is this is defined in this one because the row click is um, is attached to the row to each row okay because it's a click handler on each row that's why I can do this so we've got uh, this refers to the row so all I'm saying is, well, every row has the attribute primary key on it. So I'm just I'm just telling you when you click, go ahead and uh, and give me the primary key. So row click, super simple. You've got load complete. You've also got before, uh, you've what did I what did I call it? before load start, which lets you put in option put in a function before loading begins. And then you've got one called uh, called load start, which is right after loading's done, but before I do all of my stuff to the to the functions to the columns and everything so you've got those event listeners and all that and you've got all that stuff um, and you can see how little code it took to do a lot of this advanced stuff so there you go that's what's new in version 1.1 check out the site to download it and be sure to update your copy